when you reached out to me a few weeks ago, you said, Eric, uh, there's something that is so on my mind, so important that I really want to talk about it. You know, and and I was like, absolutely. And so this is that time. This is a platform and I'm happy to share it. What did you want to talk about? Well, uh, more generally, I guess I wanted to say it's been a few years since I did any shows and it's kind of fine because it was super stressful and I'm sure you know what, I, uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, didn't disappear from the face of the earth or, you know, find religion or anything, just uh, decided it was enough. But, yeah. you know, I was used to having a platform to just rant about stuff and... <laughs> <laughs> Things have piled up a little. Yeah. Uh, um, and the particular thing that is important to talk of uh, is I feel, whew. I, <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I totally get it. So <laughs> you're saying um, that um, what's really important right now that you want to have that platform to talk about yeah, is. In, in particular, I'm real peeved about uh, what's going on with Roe versus Wade in the <laughs> yeah. country right now uh and i understand that you guys generally do not talk about that topic very much well you know the thing is i know that there are people who have practiced it a lot mm -hmm. and i've practiced counter apologetics i've practiced uh application of epistemology when it yeah. comes to specifically talking about abortion i want to do it right and right. I'm, and and of course, the best way to talk about abortion is with two guys. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Of course. Sarcasm. Folks. <laughs> um, um, well, yeah. And 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 th there is that piece as well. How much should I be talking about, and how much do should I, and what is the obligation of someone with a platform, right, to use that platform to the best of my ability? Because if I'm not using that platform, again, you know, so there, there there's just so many layers to it. But ultimately, if it's a call that I feel like I can take. I take it, and if it's not, um, then I've resolved to hold off until that I have people on who I think could handle it in a better way than I can. I, I think it's yeah. recognizing my limitations, and I hope I can. And I, uh, uh, you know, also I do not consider myself the expert on this. No. And, I mean, certainly it's not an issue that affects me as directly as some issues, but I think it's also important uh, for uh, for people to speak up against oppressed groups Agreed. who are, are more insulated from the actual effects of it. I, uh, I, and, and I'm glad you're here, man. So the stage is yours. Okay. I'm going to be right here typing in the uh, the names of all of the callers. All right. So we can take callers afterward. Um, but it's all you, man. So I'm going to back up for a sec. Oh, and of course, uh, it since it's been a while since I've done a show, I'm going to go ahead and commit the cardinal sin of looking at my phone while the show is going because I've got... <laughs> <laughs> a rough outline here of, of what what I want to say. That's okay. Um, I hope this goes well. <clears throat> you, you, you got this, man. Um, so we need to talk. Uh, uh, but uh, first, I want to talk for, a, for just a sec about uh, an issue that was always important to me when I got into atheist activism, which was the treatment of science in schools. So I dealt a lot with creationists back in the day. Uh, and I even like gave a short presentation at a school board hearing here in Texas, which went pretty well. But basically evolution, contrary to what a lot of people think, has basically been settled science for a couple of centuries now. I mean, you know, the details have uh, uh, shifted around as our improve uh, as our understanding has improved, but it was basically understood science. And for decades in the United States, it was also settled law because uh, you know you want to teach actual science to people in schools. Uh, you don't want to teach religious nonsense from a particular religious point of view, uh, and so. <clears throat> Um, it was just understood that uh, evolution is science and creation is not. Uh, but that didn't stop a lot of people from 
trying over and over again in little pesky ways. I thought of it like a whack-a-mole game where they would keep trying to promote creationism in school. I mean, you know, a long time ago, uh, they felt like they could get away with actually outlawing evolution, and then that didn't work out. So they were like, all right, well, you can teach evolution, but you also have to teach creationism, which is not science, so we don't. <laughs> And then they tried to come up with clever ways in the 90s where they could be like, oh, we're not talking about a religious point of view. We're talking about intelligent design, which is just a scientific thing that you also have to teach. And then that didn't work out. But the controversy, Russell. Right. Teach the controversy. Why aren't you teaching the controversy? Are you just afraid of the other sides of, yeah. of, of, this, <laughs> of, this, of this opinion that are equally valid? No, because I'm not going to teach uh, uh, the just various mythologies about the world as if they were science. I'm not going to teach that, you know, the gods baked some cookies and some of them came out different colors and then they <laughs> threw them to all corners of the earth. And then, uh, you know, those, those were the different races like that. That is a thing that some cultures th that at least one culture has, has believed and taught. Wait, really? I don't remember the details, but I, I do remember telling this story before. Contact skeptic generation at gmail.com. If you, un, if you okay. know the, 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 the cookie hypothesis, please let me know. Right. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the fact that something is settled does not stop people from trying to poke at it if they have very serious religious beliefs about it. Uh, and that's going to bring me to the thing we actually need to talk about, which is, uh, which is abortion and Roe mm -hmm. versus Wade. Uh, it has been settled law in the United States since 1973 when the Roe versus Wade case was passed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's great. It has led to uh, increased safety uh, and increased uh, uh, options for, uh, for women who just want to uh, live a happy, productive life at, in the way that they choose. Um, and it's so much been settled law that conservative Supreme Court justices who were being confirmed to the Supreme Court have felt the need for a long time to lie about their positions and uh, obfuscate or, or deflect uh, talking about the topic, which has come up in every single Supreme Court hearing repeatedly. Um, and I'll get, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but uh, I will just go over again what Roe versus Wade is, uh, which is that uh, abortion was legal in some states, but not others before. Uh, and the Supreme Court basically ruled in 73 that uh, there, there is going to be a national standard where you cannot deprive women of their rights uh, in any state. And the rule was basically that in the first trimester, it's already, it's always legal. If you want an abortion, you can get it. Uh, in the second trimester, it is conditionally legal uh, dependent on some issues with risks to the mother's health. And in the third trimester, it's generally illegal, but with exceptions for extreme health risks. Um, so that's basically the way it's been. Is it a perfect law? No, uh, but it's a very complicated, fuzzy issue, and it's certainly better than uh, no protections at all. Um, so, ver so states could not individually ban abortion, uh, but just like with creationism, uh, and I did have a point in bringing that up first, um, they have tried. Uh, and they've tried by looking for little cracks in the system where they could maybe attempt to make it like extremely difficult or a nuisance or, uh, or stall people long enough uh, that they would leave that window where it was actually legal. And of course, we live in Texas, which is basically one of the ground zero states where they've been trying to, uh, to change this thing. Um, so one of the popular tactics is to basically 
ignore Roe versus Wade and go ahead and say, in our state, you can't have an abortion unless, you know, you're within the first six weeks, uh, which is uh, not, which is tough because, I mean, first of all, it violates what uh, what the Supreme Court has already said. And in the second place, a lot of people don't know they're pregnant until at least like yeah. four weeks. I, I don't have well, I mean, every bit of the science in front of me. I, I, I do know for a fact that many, many, many people who own <laughs> uteruses don't have regular cycles. And right. the idea that everyone would have a regular cycle to be their indicator that they might be preggers is ridiculous. Right. Uh, and so just taking that into account, I think, is a fundamental misunderstanding of medicine. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, just side point, the vast majority of lawmakers are still men. Uh, gender equality has gotten better in some ways, but it's still uh, mostly men. Uh, and a lot of these guys have the luxury to actually not care to learn the science. Yeah. Um, another tactic that a lot of states have gone after is basically stalling. So, so uh, they say, all right, you can have an abortion, but there's like a waiting period your, once you your find out you're pregnant. parents need to sign yes, off. Yes, if you're underage, then you have to get parents' consent, if even if they're religious. Yeah, if you're married, your spouse uh, needs uh, to sign off. Right. There's that whole fucking weird uh, And thing. there's some kind of mandatory counseling requirement in some places. Where they, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm no, pissed off too. You go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> where, 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 they, where they sit you down and they try and shame you out of, uh, out of getting an abortion, including up, into, up to and including flat out wrong literature. Uh, yeah. Literature that absolutely does not show what fetal development looks like. Um, does not show what, um, you know, just, just, ugh. anyway, go ahead, right. Russell. Tra yes, trying to shame and embarrass people, but also trying to run out the clock. So we've already got these draconian restrictions on when you can get an abortion. And then they're like, all right, you have to wait a week and you have to get this many counseling sessions. Um, and by that time, it is even more likely to be too late for some people. Um, and, uh, you know, yet another tactic that they like to use is just coming up with bullshit arbitrary regulations for abortion clinics to follow, where it's like, you know, you have to have like this many uh, uh, doctors on staff or, or, I mean, stuff like this, where it's basically, all right, you can have an abortion technically, but good luck trying to find one. Yeah, you have to have admitting privileges yeah. into a hospital. Uh, for instance. Right. Which requires, uh, I mean, you know, in some states, even before the Supreme Court thing, people have been forced to, like, they've shut down the last clinic in the state, in a few states, which means you can only have an abortion if you have the means to actually travel somewhere and miss work for a certain amount of time. So that sucks. Well. Um you mean you can't just pick up and go to another state for a couple of days? I'm not sure I can do that. I mean, I can. I've got <laughs> enough. Uh, I've got enough vacation time. But, uh, but I mean, you know, there are things I'm working on where I wouldn't want to let my schedule slip. And that, and and that is the most privileged of those options. Most people don't have vacation time. They don't right. have the ability, or even if they did, you know, they they may be taking care of someone or have children already, or whatever the case is. the The idea that you can just pick up and go is this weird uh, idea that you know, I, the the assumption that everyone could do that is nutty. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, you have to travel, you have to take time off work, uh, you're for forbidden from doing things in various unconstitutional ways. And the thing about these nonsense laws is that uh, they, uh, <clears throat> um, they are against what is supposedly already Supreme Court uh, settled law. Uh, but in order to fight those, you have to take a lot of time and expense and lawyers to actually uh, stand up and deal with those things. And then eventually, uh, at least for a while, they would maybe get all the way up to the Supreme Court or a lower circuit court. And the circuit court would say the obviously true thing, which is, hey, you can't do have this law. It's unconstitutional. 
Um, but they managed to waste a whole bunch of time and stop people from exercising the rights that they have to have an abortion. Um, so I mentioned earlier that every Supreme Court justice now routinely lies or evades the question. And so I'm just going to uh, read a few direct quotes. Um, during Sam Alito's hearing, who uh, was um, uh, appointed by Bush, uh, he said, uh, Roe v. Wade is an important precedent of the Supreme Court. It was decided in 1973, so it has been on the books for a long time, which is a technically true statement, <laughs> um, but it intended to convey the impression that he's not going to tamper with it when Alito himself was the guy who has written this screed that is, uh, as far as we know, a pending decision by the Supreme Court. <clears throat> uh, Neil Gorsuch, uh, the first Trump appointee, uh, Senator Dick Durbin uh, was talking about, uh, uh, let's see, that the Supreme Court had held that a fetus is not a person for the purposes of the 14th Amendment due to the, uh, to the 14th Amendment's due process clause. Um, which is a key foundation of Roe versus Wade. And he asked, do you accept that? And uh, Neil Gorsuch said, that is the law of the land. I accept the law of the land, Senator, yes. Um, Brett Kavanaugh, um, Susan Collins talked a lot about a private conversation she had with him where he was like, uh, I consider uh, Roe versus Wade settled law. Um, I, Susan Collins, he told me that personally, uh, and I believe him. Uh, and, you know, then, of course, we have Amy Coney Barrett, was who was kind of the the most, the biggest religious zealot of, of them all, or, or at least the most open about it. And so she was a little less vague about it, but still kind of evasive, saying, Roe is not a super precedent, which is a legal term. Uh, because calls for overruling it have never ceased, but that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. Now, just, just this very coy thing that has become standard of kind of dancing around the question. Um, so there have been these unconstitutional uh, things that, that dance around uh, this settled precedent. Uh, and then uh, a couple of months ago, uh, there was a leak, uh, which was a draft opinion by Alito, who uh, was basically writing a response to a case that would say, uh, yeah, the, the uh, protections of Roe v. Wade are basically revoked. Um, that hasn't happened yet. And of course, immediately, as soon as people started discussing this travesty of justice, uh, conservatives tried to turn this into a discussion about how appalling it is that somebody leaked a Supreme Court draft. <laughs> oh, no, that's the most dangerous yeah. part of that information. Right. <laughs> As opposed to the fact that these rights are, are probably on the verge of being revoked, and it's very sinister and bad for, uh, for women and men uh, living in the United States. So I'm just going to say a few things uh, that are pro-abortion, and I'm not even gonna mess around with pro-choice. Uh, I am, <clears throat> I've always thought of abortion as something that is basically in the same category as let's say chemotherapy, which is nobody wants chemotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people aren't lining up to, yeah. to, to, to get in the queue. To, I'm right. going to get abortion today. That sounds awesome. But if you have cancer and you need chemotherapy, you should damn well be able to get chemotherapy. <laughs> uh, and there aren't any groups that are trying to take this right away or say, I'm pro-choice of getting chemotherapy. Um but there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable about talking about the fact that abortion is good, actually. And I don't mean it should be mandatory for everybody who's going to have a kid. I don't mean uh, like we shouldn't have any more babies. I mean, if you are pregnant and you don't want to be, 
you should be able to stop being pregnant. That's really basic. Uh, or, um, you know, you could just uh, bring a child into this world with parents who don't want them. Right. That, there's that. Yeah. Uh, and it's not life ending. I mean, I am aware that a lot of people uh, were born to parents they don't who don't want them, and they're still glad to be alive, and that's fine. But <clears throat> it's an unneeded suffering thing. Yeah. Right. Um, and talking about unneeded suffering, um, a, a statistic that I looked up is that something like one in eight pregnancies uh, just normally end in a miscarriage, um, which is a big concern when you start getting to the point where abortion is actually like illegal and prosecuted and suddenly you arrive in a situation where if somebody has a miscarriage, they are immediately considered as a suspect because this has been redefined as a case of murder. So something that's actually very common, uh, which is to just lose a pregnancy, we can get to the point where this is one example among many, but in October 2021, an Oklahoma jury convicted a Native American woman of manslaughter for miscarrying her pregnancy after 15 to 17 uh, uh, gestational weeks. And there's that vague range number because again, nobody knows exactly when a pregnancy starts. Yeah, I, and I, just moving on from that in the South, mm -hmm. there was a woman, uh, uh, Southern Texas, because we're in Texas, right here in yep. Southern Texas, there was a woman who was arrested on suspicion of getting an abortion. Uh, currently, there are two women who were, um, and I was just reading this earlier today, in California who are being charged for, um, for they, they, they both had miscarriages and mm -hmm. they're, they're being criminally tried. Right, and this is becoming more and more common because uh, in Texas, they have been one of the main states thanks to <laughs> that governor bastard Abbott. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Sorry. Am I allowed to talk about like specific political <laughs> positions? Well, so here's like, the thing. Nonprofit? No. This, okay. this we own this show. Yeah. We own this show. All right. You can say shit, fuck, damn. That yeah. said, uh, this topic is going to get this video hella demonetized. Oh really? Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's <laughs> worth it. Uh, we, we we talked about what the responsibility is when it comes to a platform. This video is not going to be monetized. Okay. Um, the clips where we talk about abortion, if we take callers and do anything about that when it comes to abortion, is going to lead to a drop in income for the channel. And guess what? That's fucking worth it. Right. So you can, absolutely. If you call for violence, Russell, I will tell you to stop and possibly <laughs> tackle you out of your uh, chair. Okay, I won't do that. <laughs> but that said, no, you're good. All right. Uh, well, I'm sorry that it's costing you. I, dude, um, I, uh, th this is... Again, the responsibility right. of a platform, right? That's, yeah. that's it. And I mean, really, like I said at the top, that's <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I am so uh, uh, annoyed that there are so many things that I already rant about on a regular basis <laughs> within my own home uh, <laughs> that, that um, you know, this is a topic that's important and is going to, uh, in extreme cases, cost a lot of people their lives over a long period of time. Uh, and it's something people are very shy of, uh, about bringing up. Uh, and I just want to talk about it a bit. <laughs> that's totally understood. Um, uh, anything else before we move on to calls? Uh, almost. Uh, I mean, running out. Um there are, so, so um, uh, just a few more things that I want to say is that uh, pregnancy itself is dangerous. It's more common than people think about uh, to actually just naturally die in childbirth. And we are not social Darwinists who are like, well, they weren't fit enough to survive having kids, so they yeah. didn't deserve to live. Uh, in a just society, we try to help people survive and thrive as much as possible. Uh, in the 1800s, as many as one in, a, one in a thousand pregnancies resulted in uh, the woman dying. And that is 
one in a thousand pregnancies, but of course people were having a lot of kids a lot of the time in those days, which meant that your odds of being a woman and not dying in, uh, in childbirth were, um, you know, not great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, not that most women died in childbirth, but an uncomfortably high number of them did. Yeah, no, if, if, if you're pumping out 12 kids, you know, yeah. in your life, if, I, I mean, round that down to 10, uh, that means that one in a hundred women, if you know, you have that kind of family size, uh, if you cut that in half, which I think is absolutely reasonable, that would mean one in 200, which is still freaking terrifying. Right. Uh, and I'm going to say a thing that also doesn't come a lot, come up a lot in this, this politically charged, dis uh, discussion, but it's, it's important to acknowledge sex is fun. Hell yeah, it is. Um, and having fun is not something that needs to be punished with a requirement that you either upend your entire life, uh, having, having a kid and raising them for 18 years and the massive expense of it. I'm somebody who has done that once. Uh, and it is a, a huge, uh, difficulty, which I gladly went through, but that is, does not mean that I would wish it on everybody, especially yeah. if they did not intend to, ha uh, to make that choice. Um, and I don't want, uh, people who think sex is fun <laughs> to be, uh, to be uh, roped into starting a family and have extremely increased risk of death or in, in this new case, being prosecuted for something that really should, that really has been constitutional for decades. Um, so I do not have an answer to the situation that we find ourselves in. I just want to say um, the Supreme Court is really unrepresentative right now. Uh, you know, there was a lot of shenanigans when Justice Scalia died and uh, Obama should have been able to appoint another Supreme Court justice. And instead, uh, he got blocked and delayed. For like and six then, months. And then Trump came in and rammed through three justices as quickly as he could, including Amy Coney Barrett. Within a week. Of in a week what, after he had already lost the election. So yeah. everything that Mitch McConnell and other Republicans said about what the standards are for appointing a justice it was a, they it was, were lying. No, they knew they were lying. Yeah. And they're proud and smug about it. And that hurts people. So uh, in conclusion, uh, <laughs> fuck the Supreme Court. <laughs> uh, I, and and, and uh, as long as that is our right to be able to say it, we can absolutely fucking say it. Yeah. Um, and and I, pre please keep all this in mind the next time an election comes up because they are important. Yeah. I'm, I'm just watching all of our international viewers with their jaws on the floor going, what is yeah. this dystopian shit? And for people who are already in tune and going, oh my gosh, I already know this. Good, good. But if you didn't know this and it's pissed you off, fucking good. Do something about it. Uh, find out what's going on in your area. Get involved. It's not just voting, right? Voting is yeah. fantastic, but that's a first step. There's more that you can do. Get involved in your community. Right. And, and me coming to your show and ranting about it is just not enough compared to what I should be doing. But I'm, I'm older and tired and, and busy, and, and this a, is something that I know how to do. It's a step, and not everybody knows how to do it. And yeah. if we can encourage other people to who otherwise would not have, then good. Um, actually, just kind of as an aside before we dive into calls, um, V what recently... Um, has I, I think they're I think they've put it out. They might not have yet. They've been building a website mm -hmm. that if you want to get involved, if you want to get active, um, you can just click it and it'll give you an idea. It's really really cool. Um, once V finishes it, I'll see if we can put it in the links uh, under this video. And also any links or resources that you want, we're going to make sure that we put it in the description for this video after the show as well. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a platform of to yell about this. Of course. 